Hiya kids, how are you doing? Welcome back. If you're back again, if it's your first time here, please subscribe. I know there's a lot of you who watch these and you're not subscribed, so um, it'd be nice if you uh, came back for more half assed tutorials and uh, mini reviews of things. Talking of which, Christmas, the wonderful Mrs. Bolus, she uh, turned up trumps with another little musical gift for me. Uh, and this time it was a pocket operator KO33. That fantastic little sampler. I've seen them on YouTube. They are all over the place. It's the first pocket operator thing I've ever owned. Um, and first impressions were just how small it was. I do, when I... I got it out and, and and saw it for the first time and I had it in my hand and I was surprised how tiny it was in my hand and even Mrs Bolus was she said when she was getting it out and when she got it for the first time she was surprised about how small it was which was a bit of a, a bit of a stunner because I kind of thought it'd be a little bit bigger than that small even for for like calculators that I used to have at school. So, yeah, I can see where the, the kind of design is coming from, but it, it is tiny, and I haven't realised quite how tiny it was. Still, I've had a little bit of a play, and I was wondering about how I would work it into my workflow. And I thought it would be, having played with it a little bit, the real focus for it, it's got this feature, you've got two sets, so you can sample melodic forms and it says drum. But basically the drum is, if you sample a loop, um, it slices, slices that loop up into sixteenths. And it comes pre-packed with things which have obviously been timed very carefully so that it chops sixteenth and you get sixteen different notes. So, uh, or, or instruments. But I thought it might be nice to have a little play with loops on it. So I've written a loop in the Core Stick. Fantastic app. If you haven't used it yet and you haven't got it, do so because you will not be disappointed. And there's stuff you can do with that. And I think this might be a little bridge for me. Um, but yeah. So. I've written a looping caustic and I'm going to record it into the pocket operator and then we'll have a look and have first basics of writing first kind of use with it. So very, very simple. So this is the loop. Now, to record, you have to select, select which sound you're going to record to. So I've selected this one 13 it hasn't got anything on there and then you press record and that gives you a balance of what level you're recording at and then when you press 13 to record into that slot while you've got your finger down it will record so the secret is to time it if you want a perfect loop is to time that recording straight away so one And that, hopefully, will loop up. So I can stop that there. Thank you, Caustic. Once again, you've been marvellous. And then if we listen to this sound, you can hear. And you can see which snippet you've got. It counts it up on the side there. So let me just lift that up and see if you can see that. So, and that will become important later, I shall explain. But let's record a pattern. So, uh, going to pattern, I'm going to go into number two, that's all clear. If I press play, you can't hear anything. Now I need to go into write mode. So if I'm there, and you can see, that's got like a little record button on. If I press play, see, and if I press when it scoops round, 
you get that but I'm going to change that note so the way to change it is once you've got that actually on a sequence there on the first sixteenth you keep your butt down and then you can change which I'm going to have that one and now if I play And once you've played it in once, it kind of locks it into place and goes around the others. But I want to put some snare sounds in there, so I know that one of these 16th sneak at least will have a snare in there. So if I go, that's got that, but it's the same as the other instrument. So hold that down and twiddle. There we go. Very, very simple. Now I'm going to fill in some of the other bits. So here, see what instrument we go. So I don't want the snare again. Right, and then I'm going to fill in a few bits in here. And then let's try another one in there. And then There we go, that's a nice little loop spinning round. This is where it really gets interesting, this is a bit that excited me the most. So if you come out of right mode now, and take that right mode off, you're in performance mode, and then it can get entertaining, because you can do things like this. It's got 16 effects, but they affect the whole loop, the whole thing, so you can do things like this. There you go, that's the very kind of basics of how it works. And in some ways it's quite intuitive. It didn't take me long to work out how to do that kind of thing. But I think there's more to it and there's more layers and I will have to work out the melodic. And there doesn't seem to be any kind of um, real-time record mode in it. Everything seems to be done 
as um, step time record, which is fine. Next step, I think, is to work out how to sequence it with other things. So I've got a couple of other stuff which has got CV gates and gates and, and that kind of thing on there and work out how to sync all of that up together. That will be a challenge and I'll see how that goes. And if I ever figure it out, I'll come back and let you know. But there we go. First impressions. Fun. Definitely as a perf little performance tool. I think I might do a few more jams with these. I think I might do a couple of weekend challenge jams with this. I think it would be quite a nice little thing to play with with regards to that. And um, But it's small. So small. Frighteningly small. And it looks like a geek's wet dream. Which I suppose is what it is for a synth geek. What more do you want? Good toy. Wonderful Christmas present. Um, I'm such a lucky chap. And hope to see you again soon. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Ring bells. Do all of whatever it is that you do. And um, most importantly of all, have fun kids. Share and enjoy.